Well, yes. You know, there's a reason why DC is called Death Count. And all it's the murder. Ca- it's the murder capital of the world, and that, and that's that's mainstream. That's mainstream. Well, Vinnie, you know, well, Vinnie May the first that. Mayday. Mayday is significant because the Bavarian Illuminati was officially founded on that day. Well, yes, and it goes back to the antiquities because Beltane comes from the old uh, Syrophoenician uh, Israeli god Baal, Baalim, or Beltane. And this is, and at that time, it is a fertility holiday that is also marked by the spilling of blood to rejuvenate the land in revivification and everything. And this next year, and and Beltane, where it begins in the evening of April the 29th, William will be married to Kate Middleton, who will be like a modern Guinevere to a kind of a semi-modern Arthur image. And because it takes place at Beltane, when he consummates the marriage in the Heros Gamos, or sacred marriage, he will be the next king of England, not Prince Charles. And I have done an article to expose the occult implications of William's wedding on Beltane, because it will evolve and human sacrifice will take place to revivify the land. But because he is the prince, they can't sacrifice him. So a divine substitute, like in the movie Wicker Man, will be appointed to die for him. It could be the Archbishop of Canterbury, like Thomas A. Beckett, died as a sacrifice of the divine fool or divine substitute long ago, you know, at Westminster Abbey where they're getting married, by the way. Or it could be even... Uh, somebody high in politic, but somebody high must be the divine fool for that man to be the next king. And because he's marrying her and doing Heros Gamos, the sacred marriage, he will be the next king because he will be married to the land according to the rights of divine kingship on the occult calendar land. So will this be a high profile um, death or will this be kept under the under wraps? Well, well uh, if you saw the wicker man and everything. They couldn't sacrifice the king of the island. They had to have a substitute. And he's called the divine fool many times. And everything. Thomas A. Beckett died at a time of turbulent politics as the divine fool in Britain long ago. And somebody could die as the divine fool, probably relatively high profile. And we will hear about it between April 19th next year in Beltane on May 1st in 2011. William is marrying at Westminster Abbey on the 29th when Walpurgis begins. Walpurgis is flowing into April 30th and then Beltane, the day of fertility, where there will be orgies and fertility rites practiced, but human sacrifice must happen to revivify the land with the spilling of blood. See, isn't it so bizarre how the elite are involved in all these rituals? Be it be it based on something real or not, and then the average person, if you were to say this to them, as I have, um, they just laugh you out of town, you know, uh, or they just say, how is it relevant to me? I don't care if Masons are doing hand signals over, t- uh, you know, over airwaves to each other. I don't care. How is it relevant to them? Now, how would you – I've got my own argument for that sort of position, but how would you uh, argue your case to the average layman? Well, uh <clears throat> You have to tell people uh, the implications of what that really means. And a lot of times people don't like hearing it. They'll put on the mind break and shut you off because they feel emotionally violated against the fairy tales that they want to believe in and embrace as truth, which is common in all world religions. The embracing of fairy tales as opposed to genuine truth. You know, uh, it's prevalent all over in world religions, and you can just see people turning you off when you tell them the truth of what it all means and what's really going on, and some want to hear it, and there are those that do not and will go into denial. And I'll just leave it on the fact that denial is an acrostic. The word D-E-N-I-A-L means don't even know I am lying, and that's what denial really is. And so when people shut off the truth and go into denial, they don't even know that they're lying to themselves and others. 
Yeah, and then but then they say the truth subjective, and uh, William and Kate Middleton are a good-looking couple to me. They would never be involved in ritual and sacrifice. You know what I mean? So people, people are emotive-based um, beings, and I have my own truth, and you know, a sort of reinvent the wheel type um, perception as reality approach to life. Sure. How do you, how do you get through? How do you break through that? Well, you know, it's just like recovery. For addicts and alcoholics, you cannot help those who do not want to help themselves. And when you try to, you'll probably take damage along the way trying to help those who want to live in constant denial and fairy tales and all. But more and more people know that something is going to hell in a handbasket and want the truth, and they are seeking it, and those who have truth. And so more ears are opening and more eyes are opening. And this is a time where we have very little time to get the message out because it's going to hit the fan really fast, brother. Do so we is have, it, is, it, uh, is there a something you can point to in terms of the entertainment industry? Because I understand that the, the occult and the elite are very, very much involved in entertainment industry as you have been. Um, how exactly are they influencing it? I mean, what, what kind of things could we, could we point to as examples of occult influence in the entertainment industry? Well, in the 60s, uh, MK Ultra in the United States and the British version of it with MI6 uh, was tied to the influence of the Intel community and EMI records in Great Britain and the Tavistock Institute in London was kind of part of the MK Ultra uh, British design and you see the 60s counterculture was very contrived the Beatles were manufactured as a kind of androgynous good boy image, and shortly thereafter, the Rolling Stones is the bad boy image, good cop, bad cop, in essence. But it was all contrived and manufactured. And America was duped and the world was duped. You know, thinking this was the, the 60s revolution and the British invasion, and shortly thereafter, the, cycle, the psychedelic movement happened, and it began the great social experiment on a real big level at the Monterey Pop Festival in the Summer of Love, 1967. And then when it got too big for the powers that be to handle it, they shut it down with the last two experiments at Woodstock where the young people were kept trapped in there for a few days while that concert went on and given a lot of dirty LSD. And then finally they closed it down at the concert Altamont with the Rolling Stones doing a very big snuff film and a human sacrifice of a young black man by the Hells Angels while the Rolling Stones and Jagger sang Sympathy for the Devil. And then that was when the music died that Don McLean sang about in the song American Pie, because that's what the song was really about, was the death of the good side of the counterculture in the 60s. I remember my history teacher, uh, in fact, talking about this, that uh, Hell's Angels were called in to do the uh, security at a, at a um, Rolling Stones concert and they killed somebody. But, of course, uh, that kind of uh, meaning of the uh, incidents itself uh, was, not, was not divulged to me at the time. And, and is this, this is not um, something that's isolated either, is it? I mean, do, do these kind of uh, things uh, happen in pop music? I mean, do we, do we have ritual sacrifice in the entertainment industry? Yes. In fact, uh, MK Ultra evolved into Monarch and everything. And the Monarch Beta or the MK Kittens are a lot of the people that become stars and all and are programmed, uh, you know, as... Uh, sex symbols, uh, movie stars, pop stars like Madonna, another clear one. And, of course, you're seeing the rise of Masonic and occult stuff and all the musical videos on big labels and things like that. But this really began in 1981. Mm, interesting stuff. Now, we'll get back into the occult um, entertainment industry after the break. I'm not so much sure if uh, uh, Mr. Gaga has anything to do with this, but we'll find out after the break. Ladies and gentlemen, our very special guest is Ricky Ray, and we will be right back after the break. 